Yeah, so guessing, such a huge issue for so many children and uh, very bright children as well. You'll see that there's a term sometimes used which is twice exceptional where a child seems to be super intelligent in lots of ways and then in the bottom centiles for reading and it's very baffling, very upsetting really because you see this potential being held back. And uh, the, the general pattern is you, you see lots of guessing. Sometimes they'll, they'll read a, a word fine on one page and then not on the next. They'll tend to guess particularly the, small, the short words and then often get a, a long word right, you know, which is very bizarre when you see it and you don't know what's going on. Now, I have to say it can get a little frustrating. And my, my, two of my children were doing this a lot and it's difficult to not feel they're not trying, you know. Uh, now the, the the good news is they're really trying hard. They're really bright. They they got look. They're going to learn to read fine, um, and this is what's going on. So, as a child starts to learn to read, uh, they will hopefully be be taught the sounds and the words and the letter patterns and this sort of thing. The the problem is that the rules of all that, the the, the rules of phonics, are very inconsistent, particularly in English. And so a bright child will look at that and think, you, you tell me these letters make these sounds, but, but clearly they don't. So, but I can memorize that word. And there's only 10 words in this book. So, hey, I can memorize all of them. Uh, I can memorize the whole book, actually, so that's no worry. Uh, and so they'll start getting through the early reader books in that sort of way. And they'll either recognize a word or they'll try to work it out from the context. So that's one of the reasons that longer words are often easier is because the context is often stronger for a long word than a short word, many of which are interchangeable. So they, they set off down this path and they make mistakes, but that's normal when a child's learning to read. But as they get on to sort of being six and seven and eight, you know, when, when you really expect them to be becoming quite fluent with their reading, actually they're not, they're, they're, they're hitting a plateau. So suddenly now they're dropping behind really fast and it gets extremely worrying quite quickly. Um, and the reason is because they, they're onto books with now with hundreds of words or thousands of different words being used in the books. And so trying to memorize all of those is really hard. And the picture may have gone completely. The, 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 the context is less clear. And so they, they've hit this plateau and they really don't know what to do. They don't understand why other people are able to read. Uh, and, and they're struggling so much. So the, the solution is, is pretty, fairly simple once you see that. Uh, we need to get them decoding. Uh, but clearly, you, you can take a horse to water, but you can't necessarily make a drink. And, and, and teaching the rules of phonics hasn't worked for them. Uh, so we use a process called trainer text. So we present the text with imagery above the text, uh, which shows what the sounds are in each word. And that suits these children particularly well because they're very visual learners anyhow. They've got great visual memories, most of them. So we get some... Um, I'm doing the decoding. It uh, is easy for them. They suddenly find that they can work out words with the help of the images uh, some of the time. Other times they're now just doing it naturally. After about 60 to 90 sessions, uh, they are just starting to do it you know, more and more automatically so that you see it really impacting their normal reading. Then we're just building on that until they're, they're, they've got their fluency going and they're getting more and more confident and then their spelling starts to come together. These children usually have really atrocious spelling when they're, when they're starting. They can do a spelling test. Uh, you know, so they revise a the spelling test the night before and they do fine, maybe 8 out of 10 or 10 out of 10. But then a week later, those have all gone again. You know, it's like pushing water up a hill. So uh, those, all that spelling list thing is a waste of time for them because they're trying to learn them in the wrong way. They're learning them as an image. So they, they literally have a, a photographic image of the, the spelling list in their head. They can reproduce that for the test and then it goes again. Um, so they, they, when they're doing their free writing, it's like we, we call it Frankenstein spelling because they just bolt different stuff together as best they can. They'll use lettered names, they'll use basic phonic rules, they just stick it all in and hope for the best. Total rubbish. So um, 
what you'll see is once they're reading by decoding, they will start to uh, feel the spelling coming. It's literally like that. We don't do spelling lists or anything. They just Their spelling crystallizes until they're getting eight or nine words out of ten right. They're still making little mistakes and really unfamiliar words will, you know, like, like for any of us, will, will, will be hard. But most of the words they're getting right. And um, so it releases them. To, to be able to write, to be able to express themselves, and so that's really fantastic. And uh, and the key to that is is in the reading, not in the not in spelling practice.